Welcome to part 8 of the Goth Fractals in Unity tutorial by Pearplay. In the previous part we created a trail system that moves along the fractal positions. In this final part we will add color, speed and width variables to our trail system. We'll also have a quick look at some possibilities to create with this system. So let's open up the Koch trail script and we're going to add some more functionalities. Let's start by fixing something from the previous part. We've created this movement void and in this for loop we're setting the local position of the trail. But we shouldn't set it at the top of the for loop. I'm going to copy this and remove it. But I'm going to set this at the end of the for loop, which is here. And by doing this we can make sure that we are first doing all of these things and setting all the positions and then we're applying the local position to the trail. Now that that's fixed, let's scroll to the top and add some more variables. Underneath the header audio, let's add some more variables for the trail width and the trail time. And we're also going to add some vector to min maxes there. So let's call this the width min max. And let's also add a trail time min max. Now we've already added a trail color as a gradient. Now let's also add a color multiplier. So we're going to type a public float and we're going to call this color multiplier. Now to lure up the transparency we're going to add some private colors. So let's type a private color and we're going to call this the start color and the end color. Now we're going to declare these colors in the start function. So on the top of the start function, we're going to say that start color is going to be a new color. And this is going to be 0, 0, 0, 0. Now the end color is going to be a new color as well. And this will be 0, 0, 0, 1 for the alpha. Now let's scroll to the bottom where we've got the update and we're going to add a new void and we're going to call this the audio behavior. Let's add the audio behavior to the update. So we're going to call audio behavior. Now we need to apply the behavior to all of the trails. So we're going to create a for loop and we're going to say for int i is zero. i is less than the initiator point amount i++ plus plus. now first of all we want to apply the color of the trail to a audio band so we're going to create a temporary color and we'll call this color lerp and this is going to be a color dot lerp and we're going to lerp from the start color that we declared, which is totally black, towards the emission color of the trail. So we're going to talk to the trail list and we're going to get position i dot its emission color. And we're going to multiply that color by the color multiplier. And we're going to lerp on the audio band. So let's talk to the audio peer dot audio band. Or we could use the audio band buffer or the audio band. You can choose that yourself. I'm going to use here the audio band. And this is going to be the audio band from this script that we've specified. Oh, it's I. Now let's close that one off. Now we need to apply this color to the color of the trail. So we're going to talk to the trail. And we need the I position there. And we talk to the trail itself, though it's material. And we're going to set a color. Now in the shader, the color that we want to set is called the emission color. And we will set that color to the color lerp. Now let's copy paste these lines because we're also going to apply it to its transparency. We can actually use the same color here that we declared there. So let's remove this. And we're going to say that color lerp is going to be a new color lerp between the start color and instead of this we're going to use the end color. So end color and that is it for that. And then we apply this one not to the emission color but to the color. 
Now that we're done with setting the color, let's also apply this to the width and the time. So we're going to say a new float and we'll call this with lerp and it's going to be a mathf.lerp. Again, we're going to make a lerp and we're lerping from the min-max of the width, though it's x, towards the width min-max y. And now we're going to lerp on another audio band. So I'm going to copy this piece here, paste it there, and let's change this actually to the buffer. And as you can see, I'm hard coding here whether to use the band buffer or the band, but you could make public booleans to select whether to use the band buffer or no band buffer, but I'm not going to do that here. It's just for an example, and you can extend this script by yourself. Now we need to apply this with lerp to the trail, so we're going to talk again to the trail of its position i dot its trail dot its width multiplier. And the width multiplier is going to be the width lerp. Now we're going to do approximately the same for the time. So let's copy paste this and we're going to change a few of these lines. So instead of calling this the width lerp, we're going to call this the time lerp. And we're not going to lerp with the width min max, but we're going to lerp with the trail time min max dot its x also get the trail time min max dot y and we're going to set the trail dot time to the time lerp now that was rather easy right so let's save the script and go back to unity now in unity you'll see all these public variables and we're going to set these variables from zero to something so let's apply them to all of the Koch trails that we've got in this scene here. Let's change the width from 0 0.1 to 0 0.5. Let's change the trail time from 0 to 0 0.2. And let's change the color multiplier to 2. And let's see the result of this. There you go. Now our trails change in color, trail time and trail width. And of course their speed as well. Let's see some different results when we play around with the variables. So let's not maximize on play. Now what would happen if we would increase the width? Very cool. We could increase the trail time. Set the color modifier a little bit less. Very high. Now let's quickly play around in the scene to create a nice visualization. So I'm going to remove these trails and just leave this trail, this is a triangle, and let's see what that looks like. Right, so we've got that one. So with this trail in place, I'm going to add a Koch line to the scene, and I'm going to change this Koch line to a triangle set its position to 0, so it's at the same position as the trail and this Koch line I'm going to change the generator and the generator is going to be let's add a key at the center so this is going to be at 0 0.5 and let's remove these lines let's change everything to linear so both tangents linear so this is our curve there and now what I'm going to do is do one generation I'm going inwards with a scale of one and as this is having three different initiator points I'm going to set this to three let's add the audio pair to the Koch line otherwise it won't work and we're going to set the color to white Let's see what that looks like. So it's going uh, inside. Let's use Bezier curves and we're going to use a vertex count of 16. Now it's going to be a line inside. Let's actually take off the Koch trail for one so we can see the Koch line.
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy paste this Koch line eight times. And for each of these lines, I'm going to set their audio bands to a higher audio band. So this is going to be one. Uh, this will be one as well. And seven, 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 seven. So all of these are now on a different band. So what will happen when we play it? The emission is way too high. So let's change the emission to something lower. So I'm going to set this to 1. Let's see what that looks like. So now we've got all of these different lines going inside. Which is looking pretty cool, I think. Let's make the width a little lower. Uh, 0 0.1. And I'm going to put this inside of an empty game object. Let's set the empty game object at 0, 0, 0. And I'll rename this to triangle outer lines. Now let's add all of these lines to this game object. So now we've got this preset so we can just tick it on or off. Actually I want to make them go inside a little bit more so let's change this scale to 2. Let's see the result of that. Pretty cool, it's going inside a little bit more. Now I want to create a composition along with the trails, so I'm gonna tick on this trail and I'm going to set the start generation at zero so we can make a trail that goes around of this triangle. I would like to add another trail to the scene and I'm going to add a trail that is not using the Bezier curves for a change and we're going to do two generations. Actually do three generations and we're only going inside first time we're going inside with a size of two then we're going inside with a size of one and then again with a size of two and let's make the speed a little bit higher so I'm gonna make it at 500 set the trail time to like 0 0.4 the width to 0 0.2. Let's see what that looks like. Pretty cool. Actually when we make it on Bezier curves it will do quite something else. That looks quite cool as well. Now actually if we change all these lines to a different initiator we get a different visual. So if I change it to a hexagon, we need actually six sides here. So we need to extend this one with a number of six. Well, let's change this to one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's go to the Koch line and let's change this to a hexagon. Let's also change this size to a size of six. And let's try it out. So now we've got a different visual with the same presets that we've used. Pretty cool, right? We've come to the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and learned some new things for your own creative process. You can get the source code of this tutorial, including the school preset, if you are a patron on my Patreon, supporting me for just $5 a month. Making these tutorials takes a lot of time and your support means that I can continue creating these tutorials for everyone. Obviously we can extend a lot on this Koch Fractal system and therefore I will create a pro version of this system. This system will include custom inspectors and many more features. It will be released somewhere in the near future exclusively for patrons. If you like this tutorial check out the procedural Fido Texas tutorial as well as it's similar to this one. I want to thank you for following this tutorial and if you want to stay updated to new tutorials make sure to subscribe to the channel. Special thanks to all my current and previous patrons. Without your support, I couldn't have done this. See you next time.